5 seconds to go start having given our anxious thought to these facts we are of the considered opinion that the prosecution has failed to establish the charge of criminal breach of trust against the appellant beyond a reasonable doubt we are inclined to agree with the learned senior counsel for the appellant that the known examination of b satyajit reddy has been materially fatal to the case of the prosecution furthermore it appears that b satyajit reddy was deliberately not examined as he would have deposed against the prosecution undoubtedly some of the proven facts like deposit of in trust amount from the account of the appellant to that of b satyajit reddy do create a strong suspicion against the appellant but as held by this court time and again suspicion cannot take the place of proof howsoever strong it may be we are therefore of the firm belief that in the absence of cogent and unimpeachable evidence to prove that the appellant has misappropriated the funds of the bank and or of b satyajit reddy it would not be safe to convict him under the provisions of section 409 ipc so far as the charge under section 420 ipc is concerned once again the best and the only person who could throw light on whether or not he had voluntarily agreed to transfer his fdr amount in the account of the academy or there was an element of inducement cheating or a false promise was b satyajit reddy himself who has chosen not to enter the witness box in the absence of even an ordinary complaint by b satyajit reddy regarding misuse of his fdrs it will be too far fetched to hold that the appellant had any mens rea to deceive or to misappropriate or destroy valuable property of b satyajit reddy we may at this stage briefly note that learned senior counsel for the appellant had raised another contention namely that the charges under section 409 and section 420 ipc cannot go together he eloquently argued that the essential ingredients of the two offenses are conflicting in nature section 409 or 405 ipc deals with offenses where the accused has been entrusted with the property and section 420 ipc deals with offenses where the accused has dishonestly induced the victim complainant to depart with the property in question it was therefore argued that an accused cannot be charged under both the sections simultaneously this contention however has been rendered academic in the light of the afore stated discussion and conclusions we thus do not express any opinion and leave this question open for adjudication in an appropriate case having held so we hasten to add that the appellant acted brazenly contrary to the norms and internal instructions of the bank although he was clever enough to not trespass into the prohibited areas of sections 409 420 and 477a ipc he ran the risk of causing financial loss to the bank despite his subsequent act of deposing the interest accrued upon the fdrs of b satyajit reddy from his personal account and thereby absolving the bank from such liability the actions of the appellant constitute gross departmental misconduct and are unbecoming of a senior bank officer the management of the bank rightly lost faith in the appellant and the punishment of dismissal from service imposed on him wide order dated 6th january 2006 
on the basis of the conduct which led to his conviction by the trial court is fully justified in the peculiar facts and circumstances of this case there was no legal necessity to hold any departmental inquiry to reiterate the same factual conclusions which have surfaced during the course of criminal trial such findings though may not be sufficient to fasten criminal liability on the appellant his dismissal from service of the bank is fully legitimized and the punishment so awarded is proportionate to the proven misconduct we say so also for the reason that neither can the appellant be allowed to take undue advantage of the benefit of doubt being extended to him nor is a recourse to a departmental inquiry desirable at this belated stage on the other hand upholding the order of dismissal dated 6 january 2006 will serve the cause of public interest and send a befitting message amongst the appellant's peers we are also constrained to observe that in this case the cbi has either adopted a casual and careless approach or there was some hidden pressure to derail a fair investigation stop